There's been a report this week from, again, this guy named Joe Pesci or Joe Pesh, whatever the hell his name is, from the Barn Burner No Holes Barred podcast saying that when SmackDown joins Fox, and I feared that I would read this at, at some point, I feared that I would read this eventually, there has been some speculation, there has been some talk, that the brand split might be coming to an end again in order for the rosters to be merged, which honestly does make a little sense in terms of where they would be coming from and doing that. And I feared that would be the case as soon as I heard the Fox thing because Fox is not under the USA NBC umbrella. It makes sense for them to bring back the brand split when they're both on USA. Like, they brought back the brand split right after SmackDown joined USA. I never noticed that. They were on USA for a while. Um, they, they only joined USA, I think, at the beginning of 2016, if I'm not mistaken. Or no, I think they went to Thursdays at the beginning of 2016. I don't really remember the timeline. I think they went to Thursdays in 2015, but they were still on Sci-Fi. But they joined USA in early 2016. So that's what that was. And as soon as that became the possibility, it's like, okay, they're on the same network. Why not do a brand split? And they've done the brand split before with Raw and SmackDown being on different networks. So they've done it before. They can do it again. I don't see what the big problem is. I think where they're coming from, where they could be, you know, where this could be a problem, is that Fox paid an obscene amount of money for SmackDown. Now, SmackDown's a great show, don't get me wrong. The amount of money that NBC and Fox paid for these two shows, Raw and SmackDown respectively, is ridiculous, considering how bad the shows have been, or at least not as good as they used to be from years ago, specifically in Raw's case. But they want the shows, WWE made their money, they don't give a shit. But Fox may want all the star power. They don't want just half the roster. Why would they be paying that much money for half a roster? They might not get the concept of a brand split. So quite honestly, it would not surprise me that in one year's time, they would be moving from USA to Fox and ending the brand split, which I think is absolutely for the worse. I could go on forever and ever and ever about this. And maybe it's just because part of me is nostalgic. I grew up on the brand split, or at least the part that sucked anyway. The brand split really fell off a cliff as soon as I started watching. Yet, for some reason, I like a brand split. You would think it'd be the other way around, where I'm like, okay, the years that I started watching for, starting in 2008, the brand split sucked. People moved from Raw to SmackDown all the time. Now, I say that fucking days removed from Tamina, a SmackDown superstar showing up on Raw for no real reason. Big Show, a Raw superstar showing up on SmackDown for no real fucking reason. This has happened many times now since the incarnation of the second brand split, the reincarnation of the second brand split a few years ago. This is not the first time that something like this has happened. That being said, um, you would think that I would have soured on the idea just because it really wasn't done right the first time. And let's face it, from like 08 to 2011, the brand split was a joke. People showed up on Raw and SmackDown anyway. We had the Super Show. It was fucking terrible. It was awful. And SmackDown fell off a cliff after 2008. It was pretty good in 2011 at the very tail end of uh, the brand split. But even by that point when we had feuds like Randy Orton and Christian and stuff like that and Edge is world champion, they were showing up on fucking Raw anyway. And I know obviously like we had some Raw superstars on SmackDown this week, but it was a special occasion. It was SmackDown 1000. It's a little different. I will excuse that. But Tamina showing up on Raw when very clearly she was a SmackDown superstar the last time that we saw her back in January is inexcusable. But back to what I was saying before about the brand split ending. I think it's absolutely for the worse. See what you will about the company. See what you will about Raw and SmackDown and the fact that it's not exciting anymore. SmackDown I don't necessarily agree with just because I think the show has been a lot better in recent months than it was when Jinder was champion a year ago. Good God, SmackDown was unbearable to watch. Raw was the better show for a while, which was shocking. Raw is easily, undoubtedly, the worst show of the two currently. Despite what you want to say about those two shows and the creative direction of each show, whatever. We have a deeper roster than ever before. Now, I know they had a very deep roster back in the Attitude Era, and that was pre-brand split, but a lot of those guys, I, I don't know. It was a different time, a totally different time where you can get away with something like that. I'm not saying that we have more stars now than we did back then. I think we have a better wrestling roster now than we did back then. But there is so much fucking talent between Raw and SmackDown, there's still guys now that aren't even on TV. There's people, Apollo Crews showed up on Raw this week. I honestly cannot blame the people over at Ringside News for not knowing they changed his name back to uh, Apollo Crews as opposed to just Apollo, because the guy's never on fucking TV. The guy is never on television. So how the hell will they know that? The guy has not been on Raw in months. 
people probably forgot that he was even employed. Mike Kanellis, same exact thing. Guy has not been on TV in no joke close to a year. Aside from the WrestleMania Battle Royal, the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal, which even in and of itself was on the kickoff show, he has not been on SmackDown in a fucking year. And now he's on 205 Live. He's still not on TV, technically. People probably thought he was fired. That's how deep of a roster right now, where people that we have right now, where guys like Apollo Crews and Mike Kanellis and you know, Ty Dillinger, they're, they're, there's guys that are being overlooked, and there's nothing being done with them. It It's crazy. So why would bringing back uh, uh, just one single roster, how would that solve anything? How would that solve anything? What, are we going to get more fucking Shield versus Roman Reigns or more Shield versus Strowman, Ziggler, and McIntyre matches on Raw and SmackDown? Because that was the case for a long time with WWE. That's why SmackDown was such a missable show for a long time, from like 2012 to 2014, 2015, because they did that shit constantly. Remember when Roman Reigns feuded with the League of Nations a few years ago? We would legit have like Roman Reigns versus Wade Barrett on one show, Roman Reigns versus Alberto Del Rio the next show, Roman Reigns versus Sheamus on the next show, like between Raw and SmackDown. Monday Raw, uh, it would be Roman and Sheamus. SmackDown that Thursday, it would be Roman and Del Rio. Raw that Monday, four days later, it would be Roman and Rusev. That Thursday and SmackDown, it would be a handicap match. And somehow Roman won every single fucking time. That's besides the point. I'm just saying that if you do that, you will get these same people in these same positions on both shows. Say what you will about the brand split and Raw being in a terrible spot. Raw would be no better with the brand split being gone. It really wouldn't. I think, if anything, it forces them to push people they would not ordinarily push. Do you think AJ Styles would be WWE Champion for a year if they only had one roster? Give me a fucking break. The guy would not even sniff the main event scene if there was one roster. Maybe AJ, Samoa Joe never would. Absolutely never would. There's people now that aren't even in the main event scene because we have Roman and Brock as champion and they never really defend the thing. Braun Strowman, eh, he might be in the main event scene. Daniel Bryan, give me a break. The guy'd be going for the United States or Intercontinental Championships, which is fine. But he deserves to be in the main event scene as he is right now. Miz would never even sniff the world championship again if there was only one roster. There's a lot of people that would not be getting the opportunities they are now without the brand split. And yeah, there's cons to it. Yes, sometimes we see the same matches, usually on Raw. Fucking Bobby Roode and Chad Gable versus The Ascension. You think it would be any different if we didn't have a brand split? Newsflash, it wouldn't be. Yeah, we'd get fresh matches for a week or two. You know, between the Raw and SmackDown guys. But then they're just going to push who they want to push. It doesn't matter who you are. If we have one roster, they're still going to push Roman Reigns. They're just really aggressively pushing AJ now because he has the show all to himself. He's basically in the edge spot. Without the brand split 10 years ago, Edge would have never won 11 world championships. Are you kidding me? Maybe a few. Not 11. I mean, I'm sure the guy would still be in the Hall of Fame. But the guy would have never, ever come that close to superstardom if it wasn't for SmackDown having its own identity and being its own show. Same can be said for John Cena getting a shot back in the day. I'm sure they saw something in, it, in, in him anyway. But, you know, a lot of people benefited from SmackDown being its own show. Rey Mysterio. You think if he would be you think he would be pushed on Raw if they had one show back in the day, back in 0203? Give me a break. He'd be jobbed out to fucking Kevin Nash. Like it was WCW Nitro all over again. He'd be losing to Triple H every week on Raw. You think Eddie Guerrero would have become world champion if SmackDown was not its own show? Probably not. Chris Benoit, same thing. I know, you know, he was on Raw at the time when he won the world championship, but it wasn't, you know, for long. But point of the matter is is that I think the brand split is absolutely for the better. Especially if they're going to keep SmackDown. You know what? If you want one show with one roster, then get the the fuck rid of SmackDown. Get rid of SmackDown. I don't like seeing people on more than one show. Yeah, it's different with, like, guys like Leo Rush and Drake Maverick and whatever. Because, you know, they're doing two different things on two different shows. On Raw, they're managers. On SmackDown, or on 205 Live, rather... Drake Maverick's the GM, DM the GM, and Leo Rush is a wrestler. So they serve two different purposes on two different shows. In that case, and technically they're on the Raw brand, that's what they said years ago. At this point, I'm not exactly sure that's the case. But anyway, um, I don't like seeing the Raw wrestlers on SmackDown constantly. I know you kind of get it in the build-up to Survivor Series when they do the brand supremacy storyline. That's fine. Even that I don't really care about. I hope they don't do that shit again this year. I really do not care about Raw versus SmackDown. Who cares? Has it ever really mattered? No, it hasn't. SmackDown's the better show. Just end it and move on. Anyway, um, I don't even know what I was trying to say. 
But, yeah, I just think the brand split would be better off sticking around. And, again, has its problems. They don't really do the brand split as well as they should. But when it comes to cases like that, I think there's a lot of people that would be way worse off than they are currently. Um, I don't like seeing the same guys on two different shows. I don't want to see Roman Reigns in the main event of Raw and SmackDown every week. That's the benefit of SmackDown. If you don't like what's going on on Raw, SmackDown is a great alternative. And... Yeah, in a lot of extents, does it feel like the same show? Yeah, sure, because it's WWE. It's all under the same umbrella. They're running the same arenas most of the time. But, um, you know, they have the commentary table in a different spot. They have a different set. SmackDown and Raw have two different sets. Different theme songs, a different feel. Two hours compared to three hours. It is a very different show. SmackDown is compared to Raw. And I think merging the two rosters would be a ginormous, massive mistake. For the entire roster... And for the weekly programming. Because if you expect the shows to be any better than they were during the brand split, then you're just wasting your time. Because I think at this point, Raw and SmackDown having their own identities, at least in SmackDown's case, it can benefit the overall company. Because Raw may not be any better, you know, currently now than it was two, three years ago. Raw may be worse now than it has ever been. But at the same time, SmackDown has a chance to shine. SmackDown is the show to watch right now. And that would not be the case if we only had one roster. So I'm really, really hoping this is all just hearsay. It's all speculation, which, again, makes sense. I understand it. I understand why they would get rid of the brand split, just because of the Fox thing, and they want one roster, they want all their stars in one show. I get that. I actually would not mind if they put more stars on SmackDown come Fox next year, which they already do anyway. Like, I could see them moving Rollins maybe to SmackDown or Dean Ambrose. Maybe Roman, I doubt it. He's like the John Cena of Raw at this point, what John Cena used to be. I mean, again, you can have more stars on SmackDown. I like the roster the way it is right now. I would not mind if they put more star power on SmackDown just to load it up for Fox. They've done that before when they moved to Sci-Fi and, you know, other, other networks and stuff like that and My Network TV 9. If they do that, fine. But I think getting rid of the brand split would easily be the worst possible thing they can do. So fingers crossed that does not become a reality and is solely a rumor and nothing more.